I'm JD the Media Jack and this is another episode of The Flip Side. This time we're talking about TikTok. Specifically, I have the pleasure of speaking with a couple of Canadian TikTok creators. Just another quick reminder that not only is this available right now on YouTube, but also in audio format as a podcast on Anchor, Spotify, Google Podcast, as well as Apple Podcast, and many different other sites. So if you want to download this episode and listen to it, Audio form is available in any one of your favorite podcast formats. Just search for The Media Jack. First Angel, who has the account Dances in Shadows. Not only is she creative, but also an incredible, incredible artist when it comes to makeup. She puts a lot of time and effort into not only her props, her makeup, but also her characters. There's a lot of thought behind it. She just recently broke the 300,000 follower mark on TikTok. So right now, Dances in Shadows, this is Angel. On the flip side, what got you started in TikTok? I'm I'm sure that's the like the most common question you have ever received. But what got you interested in starting in TikTok? Uh, it was my best friend, not possible on TikTok. We we met actually earlier this year at a, a convention, and we wanted to do a Terrence and Philip skit, but we couldn't really figure out how to duet each other. And we knew of TikTok, so we figured we'd try it just as a joke. And then we were now both addicted. Was your first ventures into TikTok uh, so elaborate with makeup and costume? Yes. Uh, The very, very first ones I did, I think, were uh, a Harley Quinn mixed with a Joker on either side. I don't think it even exists anymore on there. It's so old. But, yeah, back then my makeup skills were a lot... um, more crude it took a lot more hours of prep time than it does now Mm. so I spent a lot of time and I think I made like four videos that day and I'm ashamed of them all now (laughs) (laughs) you got to start somewhere you you have to start somewhere so with that being said do you have a formal background in makeup and artistry no I took uh, art fundamentals and animation at Sheridan College so I was technically trained for that and then uh, when I was in the video game industry I found doll repainting and so I ended up jumping fields and repainting dolls for 10 years which is kind of just a miniature scale of what I do now hold on video game industry yeah it's mobile (laughs) video game industry yeah it was a very short lived venture oh okay so it was just basically dipping your toes into it for a short period of time and then moving on okay it wasn't my lifestyle especially as a girl uh, it was a bit toxic at the time to be in that workforce. It's I, it's unfortunate, and there's more and more stories about that backing up uh, your situation, uh, yeah. even to this day. So, uh, so you got out of that and addicted to TikTok at this point in time, and really starting to find your, I guess, your footing. I can only assume yeah. your makeup and your artistry is so elaborate. And also your facial expressions and your performance. Uh, Do you have any theater background? No, it's the classical animation. We learn expressions and stuff, right? And then my mom's very expressive. All of us kids had, like, crooked smiles and stuff. So I've always done that. I just hit it more as growing up because people would be like, that's different. Why are you doing this? And you never want to be different, right? So I've Mm -hmm. learned to, you know, freeze my face like normal people do. But... I started doing it accidentally on TikTok and people liked it and now I get to actually talk like it more comfortably for me anyway. It, I'm more natural and other people like it so it's cool. In a few of your TikToks, first of all, I'm I'm already a fan. You're like I, I downloaded the app like a month ago and on the for you page, the FYP, I think you were like the third or the fourth one that showed up and you were lip syncing to Lily Allen's fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> and and immediately I was I was hooked because it's like the 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 makeup and the costume and the expression and also the choice of music with the message behind it is like I like this. This is cool. But with that you in other videos lip sync and even a hashtag cosplay. Mm-hmm. You are you an avid cosplayer? Have you been before? Uh, I've attended a couple cons. I only started in September, both the makeup and cosplaying at the exact same time. Uh, so I only made it to three or four cons before COVID happened. Right. So 
I was planning on being a cosplayer, and then all this happened, so I've been kind of trying to feel my way into where I belong in the world, but it seems like TikTok kind of found it for me. Yeah. It is a massive achievement for you. Uh, a quarter of a million followers on TikTok. Follow yeah. <laughs> the number is, I could just see, see it rattling around in your brain right now. Uh, when did it start to really sink in that uh, not only is this something that is is possibly an avenue for you to express yourself and I don't, I don't, I don't know, and I don't care, and it's none of my business if you're making money doing this. But just the fact that you have a follower count as high as a quarter million plus, when did it start to sink in for you that this is something more than just, just a simple app for you? Um, I started in April, so by about June, I started getting a lot of messages from like veterans and um, people who work in different forms of emergency work, uh, truckers, different people who are on the road or forced to be at home right now because of massive surgeries. And they're saying that, you know, TikTok became like their regular daily thing. And mm -hmm. uh, that, that ca character in particular, Malady, really, for some reason, connects with a lot of people and that becomes their daily thing with coffee. So it, that's, I think, when it really hit me that it wasn't just for fun, that there's something more to what I'm doing right now. Mm. The your account is dancing in shadows. The person you portray, can we call her a clown? No, you can call her a clown. It's easier okay. than fully explaining her background to people. F fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, does this does a clown have a name, or is that the name? That's Malady. That, Malady. Uh, yeah, I have several original characters, but the one everybody really cares about, the star, is Malady. Gotcha. Uh, how did Malady... So yeah, I repainted dolls, and a lot of them were clowns right before I jumped over to cosplay. And um, the origin of her name was I was actually really sick at the beginning of March with some sort of unknown virus, so that's where the name came into play. And so I started playing around with this idea of this virus that infected me and I'm just this host. But this virus isn't like a normal virus. It's a virus that one affects you with love and laughter and you know, good things. But this virus is very aware that nobody wants to get a virus. So no. it shows something happy. A clown to symbolize, you know, what they believe gotcha. you know, symbolizes happiness and whatever. It's uh, it's, it's, a, it's it's a weird character, but people seem to like her yeah could you briefly walk me through uh, from start to finish uh, going through I, I'm assuming you record m multiple videos in one shot start to finish a process of a day working with Malady well especially with Malady I usually start the day by just like going through the for you page and seeing what kind of vibe I feel like for the day which dictates her makeup so if I feel neutral she'll have like gray eyeshadow if I'm feeling sad or creative she'll have blue eyeshadow if I'm feeling really rocker or angsty she'll have the red colors and highlights throughout her costume and makeup um, her makeup takes 45 minutes to do 15 minutes to get her outfit on so within an hour after that I'm ready to go I don't pre-plan anything mm. I have probably a thousand sounds in my saved folder so I just like wheel of fortune it and just click and I listen to it once just nowadays because I've had a couple surprise ones when they used to go intuitively with them right um, and I just kind of just one take it and go so uh, usually within an hour or two I can get like 20 to 40 videos 20 to 40 yeah Re I managed wow. 80 videos one day really yeah I just took a nap in the malady outfit I just like lay on my back for 40 minutes and I got back up and just did the rest that's, so that's an, twice a week. Really? That's yeah. an incredible work ethic. Uh, animator. I'm used to it. <laughs> 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 I'm without sleep in school, so it's like... Yeah. I'm used to it. S sometimes in your videos you incorporate these uh, rather elaborate props. Are, is this all from your brain? And uh, Oh, it is? Yeah. Yeah. I'm just crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with crazy. <laughs> Nothing wrong with crazy I at all. I decided I wanted to build a giant old school TV one day out of cardboard. 
Now that's in my basement, and it's like four feet by four feet. And I have a giant half-scale ice cream truck in my basement now that I just randomly built on a whim in two days. Mm. Yeah. What about the uh, the butcher's knife? Oh, uh, that was a suggestion by a fan because I was just they were old Halloween props, but they kept getting banned. So they're like, wow. why don't you paint stripes on it, and then TikTok should understand they're fake. Still doesn't work. No. Well, I'm a fan of it. Well, thank I, you. I, I I lo- I love the attitude that you you uh, portray on. You know, I would say about half of your videos the the no nonsense attitude of this is who I am and you know if you don't like it then please just move yeah. on. Get over the, yourself. Yeah, the algorithm is different uh, for those who are unfamiliar with TikTok. Which if you are. Um, Hi, welcome. Uh, <laughs> where it's not just like there's there's been issues with other TikTokers and other personalities where in cases of Twitter or Facebook or even Instagram, it is utterly okay to just go bam, 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 and just like a whole bunch. But if you do that on TikTok, it actually hurts creators yeah. because it's not the likes, it's the watch time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I've been shadow banned a lot lately because of that. People will go in thinking they're helping me and they'll like a hundred videos in five minutes and mm. nobody sees my stuff for a week. It's so, fun. so with that, actually, maybe you can help answer a question because uh, I'll go through TikTok and I will see um, either the ones that I follow or the For You page or whatever. I'm always nervous now because like, I want to... I understand that you know throwing a heart down and putting into my favorites is, is is great and it also helps to follow you as an example but I don't want to swipe up or or skip a video too soon and so now I'm having to find myself like almost nervous to swipe up too soon or if the video starts again am, am I damaging things because if I watched it the watch the full length be it 30 seconds and then it starts a, and like the one second later am i doing it wrong now because no, no. they just okay. they only care that you watch the whole thing the first time okay so basically when you look at your analytics it'll be like okay your video is 10 seconds long average runtime eight seconds so they're skipping out on that last two seconds gotcha. and so that if it keeps doing it to every video they just end up pushing you off the for you page because you're not engaging and keeping them around to the final last edit. So yeah. So anyone watching this or listening to this, watch the whole damn video. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it doesn't matter when you like. That's the other question. Is like, can I like it right at the get go? Because I like liking your videos. You can mm-hmm. like it whenever, but watch the whole thing. That's right. all that matters. With the content that is put out there, there is the opportunity to do a duet. Anyone could basically take a video of yours and do a duet alongside of you, be it a reaction or back and forth, depending on the audio and the interaction. Is there anyone out there that you're always uh, flattered or even surprised by when they choose you to do a duet? Oh, yeah. Um, especially Izzy Dizzy Spells, Camilla Severin, Inked Alpha. And then, of course, my bestie, Not Possible. They're all phenomenal cosplayers and actresses. That, yeah, especially Camilla Severin. I think she's, like, the superstar of TikTok. So whenever she leaves a comment or likes one of my videos, a lot of my friends will message me and go, Oh, did you see it, Camilla? She, she's dueling you in your comments. you got to go back. <laughs> so. Do you ever get an opportunity to actually work with them, like, send them, send these specific TikTokers or personalities a message and say like, hey, I'm doing this. How about you jump in with me on this? I haven't done that per se. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I do it with Not Possible because she lives in the same town as me. Okay. And we do it together. Um, I have messaged Inked Alpha and I do plan on actually hitting up Camilla and Inked Alpha. They're both very approachable uh, people. I have some plans that I want to get some permission with their characters first, but yeah, I think it would be a fun little storyline if they want to take part. Cool. It's something to look forward to. Yeah. I want to expand beyond just, you know, lip syncing music and stuff. I think there's a lot of us that are very connected and we get along really well. That It'd be fun to find new ways to explore mm. and build maybe worlds for everyone to kind of come together. So we'll see. 
with that and expanding and whatnot, um, again, unless someone's living underneath a rock, uh, President Donald Trump is on this sort of tirade, and for whatever reason, this is not a political conversation, but for whatever reason, seems to have a thing against TikTok and is looking to ban it. Now, there's conversation out there of other companies, including Microsoft, for purchasing TikTok, the North American uh, office of it. And mm-hmm. it's prompted a lot of personalities uh, to shout out and say, like, you know, I'm on other formats, I'm on other platforms, follow me on Instagram. And I know that you have an Instagram as well. Mm-hmm. Has this sparked any sort of inclination or feeling to further expand your talents and your audience? Mm-hmm. Not really, because there's already been that pressure on TikTok. People want longer content. People want, like, live interactions, which obviously you can't do with COVID right now anyway. But I've already kind of been, and I've been been, uh, approached by other platforms. But I like where I am right now. And he's not going to do anything until at least September. So I think (laughs) I'll ride this out. And, I mean, knowing him, he's going to figure out somebody else. It's <laughs> okay. <laughs> you just jingle the keys in front of him. Yeah. He's hashtagging Malady the Clown for president, and he's going to come after me. Small oh. in Canada. <laughs> he, he won't know what the heck to do with you. He, honestly, he won't know what the heck. But, yeah, that's, that's a conversation for... for- <laughs> you know what? If anything, he should be asking you for makeup tips because when, oh, when those uh, circles yeah. from the glasses from tanning, yeah, he needs to exactly. Help. He, Virus fix, help. fix this thing. Nice. Yeah, exactly. Flowers on his face, so at least you know when he's giving bad news, we can be like, well, at least he was pretty. <laughs> <laughs> at least he was pretty. <laughs> There is one thing I really wanted to touch on, um, and it it harkens back to the Lily Allen video. Um, What is the right way and the wrong way to interact with someone who follows you on TikTok? So what is the right way and the wrong way for someone to say, hey, I appreciate you? Well, first of all, don't say I look better without all that makeup and to give up on my career. (laughs) Wow. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. There's a there, that's a common thing lately. Oh, why do you do this to your face? Um, or ask me what's wrong with my face. That's another one. That's not a good way to start. But just saying, hey. I mean, not being super annoying about it, and just saying, hey, 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 hey. Really, times I've had that happen too. Really? But, you know, yeah. I get thousands of comments on my videos a day, and uh, hundreds of private messages so I don't get back to everybody but I do try and it annoys me when I get these really fake comments that you know are taking up my time away from genuine people so right as long as you're genuine I'm genuine back yeah hey and look you know you and I are talking because surprise surprise I treat you with respect (laughs) it's not hard no, it's not. <laughs> in fact, it's it, in fact it's more difficult to act like a complete dickhead. So yeah, tr- yeah, go figure. Some people. I'm not witty enough to think of enough comebacks to like get into a fight with anyone anymore. It's been too just long re- since high school. <laughs> just refer back to the Lily Allen video. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I'm reciting the, the lyrics. So like, where have I heard this before? Yeah. <laughs> Nowhere. It's original. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so congratulations on a quarter of a million followers on TikTok. That is impressive, and I'm sure it's just a glimmer of the potential and the success you're going to have in the near future. Your <laughs> your talent and your skill is easily portrayed on every single video. And I think the fact, you know, barring the yahoos and jackasses that seem to feel inclined to act like complete tools i think the fact that you have so many followers and you have such a fan base shows that uh, you are growing a community that reflects who you are which is caring and uh paying attention and also has a great wicked sense of humor so congratulations 
Yeah, I'm quite proud of my fan base. I seem to have a very good fan base. I'm very proud of who I have behind me. <laughs> For anyone who is unfamiliar, please let everyone know where they can find you on social media. Anywhere as Dances and Shadows, um, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Coffee, and Patreon. I think those are the only ones. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. Next up, another Canadian TikTok creator who has just surpassed 526,000 followers. She is Foxy of Formative Fox on TikTok right now on the flip side. What got you interested in starting in TikTok? Actually started it because I found funny videos and I found the advertisements and I was like, hey, let's get that application. And then I started seeing cosplayers and that's really what got me into it, making videos and whatnot. How far have you come creative-wise uh, from the starting of your TikTok career, let's call it that, to where you are now? Because I, I have a hunch that uh, the makeup and the costumes and the UV light or the, uh, the black light transitions wasn't in your repertoire when you started. It was not. I actually didn't start cosplaying until almost a year into doing TikTok. And I've really really grown with that. Um, I actually am pretty socially awkward when it comes to social interactions. And I was more so when I started. Mm -hmm. But I think it's really helped me build that confidence in social interactions and going live and doing stuff like this even. When did you start to notice that you're, you're getting traction, you're starting to get attention on a almost mind boggling scale because you're you're creeping up, correct me if I'm wrong, but you're creeping up to half a million followers at the beginning of the year actually uh i hit 100k and from there it was just it was quick <laughs> really? really yeah is there any do, can you pinpoint any specific reason or trend that you were uh you were noticing that was getting you the attention my buet character so i accidentally created buet i made a set of teeth and i had intended it for a different character and then i'd put the teeth on put the character on and went like this and it was end of story uh <laughs> I was like, that's Booet. I, I have a white wig. Let's do it up. Um, and then two of those videos went relatively viral, I think. Both of them are over 200,000 likes, something like that. So mm -hmm. that's what really gave me traction. So you create props for cosplay. Did, they, yes. co did cosplay come first or did TikTok come first? TikTok came first. Okay. So I didn't really start doing my cosplay stuff until well into my TikTok career i started with comedy what were your first ventures into cosplay then because if you started off with comedy that's a bit of a jump from one yeah. genre to another well there were sp certain creators that i saw on tiktok and i was like wow that looks really cool that looks like something that i would really like to do and i saw them creating characters and building like stories around them and i just i had ideas for for visual creations because like i'm a painter i, I draw on paint so I get like ideas in my head of what I'd like to draw and paint. And it's kind of the same idea when I'm creating a character. The extent of your cosplay, how much of that is created by yourself and how much of it is uh, added on with purchases? I do everything myself if I can. The only things that I haven't really made thus far or haven't successfully made thus far are like wigs. I've been trying to modify clothes, but usually that's thrifted. I'm a big advocator for cosplay doesn't have to cost you a lot. Mm. Majority of my costumes cost under like 50 bucks. So how do you get to your information? Because like, I can't imagine, I can't imagine creating teeth being easy. And I've noticed you made some wings and you did a quick little tutorial about it. But I can't imagine like a lot of the things that you have created came easy trial and error with the teeth I did look up a tutorial on it and there was some things that they didn't say in their tutorial that I decided to put in mine because tutorials always make it look easier I just try to be real <laughs> <laughs> expect this problem when you're going into this direction type yeah thing. gotcha don't expect it to work the first time because it's not <laughs> what inspired you to start playing with the luminescent and the uh, the black light, the painting and stuff? There is a creator that I followed, Nissa V, and she did a lot of the uh, black light stuff. And I saw that and I was just like, oh, that would be really cool. And I decided to go to Walmart, grab some, some neon stuff and some like cheap face paint at that time. Since then, I've changed to my stuff I get from Amazon. Mm -hmm. But I tried it out and it, it worked really well and people really liked it. And I was just like, wow, 
I like this. <laughs> That's cool. I noticed you're wearing contacts right now and you wear contacts yes. in a lot of your videos. First question is, uh, do you require glasses or contacts on a regular basis? And second of all, what do you prefer to wear when it comes to colored contacts? I don't require glasses or contacts, though I've been told I look good with glasses. In terms of what I like to wear, what do you mean? Like, do I have a favorite set of contacts? Or? Yes, yes. I have a set of black mini scleras that I wear all the time. And then these ones I really like because they match my hair and they make me look like an anime character. So no argument here. <laughs> <laughs> Being on TikTok for uh, the period of time that you've been in, which is what basically just over a year now. Two years, around two years, around two years. Yes. Yeah. Have you noticed any sort of uh, camaraderie and community as opposed to could be perceived as a negative crowd or anything as such, because the reason why I asked this, and this will give you a little bit of a background, is with my own history with social media, I found that Twitter is very toxic. Instagram is creative, but it's also highly commercialized. And I, me just jumping into TikTok, even within the past month, I've noticed that there is a bit of a split line, at least in my experience, when it comes to creativity, positivity, community, and then there is uh, backlash, controversy, as well as a lot of scripted, almost BS. Have you noticed anything with the uh, that sort of trend when it comes to your followers? In terms of my followers, I would say that my community community is great. Uh, there are certain people that come across my videos that decide to be mean, but it's, I don't really take it personally, but it's really funny that you say that. As I started TikTok, I found that it was just, it was a starting platform. So a lot of people didn't take it very seriously. So they just had fun on it, which was great. And now that it's gotten more popular, there are more people attracted to it uh, that do have negative lights and do want to spread that negativity. And I found the trolls have gotten bad. The people that jump into your live streams and like, you know, mm. insult you for no reason. How do you handle that? Usually I would ignore it um, or just tell them to go away or like block them, not even acknowledge them. Cause like really trolls are looking for a rise. And if you give them that, then that's, that's what they wanted. I did uh, notice on your most recent TikToks, there was someone who uh, was trying and failing at flirting with you. Does this happen on a regular basis? Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I have a lot of those. <laughs> There's specific people I'll see on, like, every video commenting about stuff like that. And I think that just comes with the territory of being a girl on the Internet. But, mm -hmm. I, yeah. Again, I just usually ignore it. I'll like every other comment and try to give them the hint by not liking theirs because I'll, I'll like them when I read them yeah. so that I know which ones I've read and gone past before. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Do you, do you it get, happens a lot. It happen, I, I, don't, I don't, I'm not surprised at all that it happens a lot. Do you actually get any sort of the, uh, the reverse situation? Because I can imagine, like even myself, I've been in the radio industry for many years. I still geek out. I still fanboy. When I see someone I, I adore, admire, respect, or anything like that, I still just like, ah! Do you Have you been on the other side of that? And if you have, how does that feel? Wait, where somebody's geeking out over me? Yes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> actually, I really enjoy jumping into people's live streams like smaller creators and uh, acknowledging their work. Like a lot of people send me live streams and I really appreciate that because mm. uh, that's the only way I really find people these days is people sending me live streams and, and going because a lot of people, a lot of those people don't show up on the For You page, which is upsetting. But I'll go into their live stream and they'll be like, oh my God, I really like your work. I've had people cry which is always a weird situation for me. I'm glad they can't see me because I would be so awkward. <laughs> <laughs> stop crying, please stop crying. Yeah. I'm just a person, I'm just a person, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I can only imagine, honestly, I can only imagine. You've been on TikTok for a couple of years now, but mm -hmm. uh, what else do you do social media wise? Well, I've recently tried to um, grow my Instagram. So Instagram being a little bit more commercial, it's the way that you get businesses to notice you. And that's the only reason that I've really gotten businesses to notice me. Mm. And I also recently, since the whole quarantine thing started happening, I've done a little bit of Twitch and I've been trying to consistently stream with that. 
because uh, I would like to get into video games, and I play horror games, and people like to see me squirm, so that's <laughs> great. <laughs> Again, it goes back to the whole thing like, oh, you really are human. You are affected by things. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Does that mean that uh, this is hopefully, if not already, this is uh, your source of income? This is how you make a living? Well, currently, this is how I make a living. I ended up losing my job over the quarantine thing. So I decided to really kick in the gear and, and work on it and see if I could do it because I had savings at the time and was just like, I can't afford to take the time. This mm. is a good time to do it. So it's an opportunity that I took. And so far, it's been going really well, really well for me. What is your background when it comes to just general employment? A lot of cellular communications. I used to sell cell phones and I did for about five years. Okay. So Customer service. Yeah, that's what I did. You poor child, you. <laughs> yeah. As a socially awkward person, it was yeah. great. <laughs> Do you have an arts background? Only what I've done on the personal side of things. Like, I used to do special effects a little bit for just myself, mm. uh, just trying to learn it. That didn't last very long. I did it for maybe a month and then dropped it, like most of my hobbies. I'm actually surprised TikToks lasted this long. <laughs> Well, you're getting the instant feedback with TikTok, so you're getting that gratification of like, okay, that worked, and then you can build off of that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Whereas other things, you create something and just kind of sit on it, and you work on it, and you send it out there, and you literally have to grab someone and go, what'd you think? Yeah. <laughs> so I can understand how you can continue on. Yeah. yeah. And that's the nice thing about TikTok is discoverability is relatively good. Mm -hmm. Like people can find you really easily, whereas YouTube, it's it's hard. You have to really push to get that. What do you hope to achieve in the next, let's say, two years when it comes to your brand, for lack of a better term, as well as your following? I'm already trying to increase the quality of my cosplays. So I'm starting to do well-known characters and actually get into like armor sets and, and trying to do big things like that because there are cosplayers that I follow on Instagram that I really admire and would love to be at that level someday. In terms of following, I mean, I have a good following already. If it continues to grow, that's awesome. If my people continue to support me, that's awesome too. I, I'm not really picky about that. It'd be cool to hit a million someday, but I think you will. It'll get there. <laughs> I think you will. I mean, you'd be surprised. Yeah, one thing we haven't pointed out yet is that you're Canadian. But you'd be yeah. like the amount of Canadian talented TikTokers, not unlike yourself out there, who have just just exploded over the past even couple of weeks. Your talent and your skill and your creativity, as well as your incredible ability to lip sync to the audio that comes up. I mean... I, I, I promise you, you're going to get there at some point in time. I'm not going to be like Ben and try to bet something like facial hair, but uh, I, I'm looking forward to seeing you uh, continue on with this rise that you have going on right now because your talent and your skill is just, it's amazing, which is one of the reasons why I really do appreciate you taking the time to talk to me today. Oh, and I'm honored to be here. Like a year ago, I would have never assumed that I'd be in this position on a podcast. <laughs> There's that. But thank you for the vote of confidence. <laughs> I need it. <laughs> <laughs> what advice do you have for anyone who wants to start uh, TikTok? Do what you love. Try things. See what sticks. Mm. Um, but most of all, you have to be passionate about it because if it's not something that you're passionate about and you're just doing it for the views, it shows. I feel that it shows in your work just your level of commitment and how much you put into it, right? Great. So I would say you have to love it. <laughs> Great advice. Perfect advice. What can people look forward to seeing from you in the near future? And where can people find you on Instagram and on Twitch? I am Formative Fox on everything. I also have a YouTube, which I'm getting back to uploading things. So I upload cosplay tutorials and gameplay from my Twitch. I'm working on a couple of cosplays. I'm working on Angel Dust right now from Has Been Hotel, and I want to do a Night Elf from WoW cosplay, which is going to be armor, which I'm not very hopeful about, but we'll, we'll try it. Oh. Uh -huh.